I'm going to uh, set the context here, Mukesh. Uh, we have had a Twitter contest uh, to pick 15 winners from around the country to get, get a chance for them to come join us here today mm -hmm. and uh, ask you and ask their favorite entrepreneurs. And we have this with a uh, few other uh, mm -hmm. uh, people that we have invited, yeah. including you. And these are your fans. And, and, and they have submitted a few questions to us. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to be asking you those questions. Sure. And, okay. and uh, at the end of the session, they can participate. Until then, mm -hmm. I think you and I are uh, okay. doing the Q&A. Right. So I'm, I'm going to start off in the interest of time. I'm going to read the names of the people who, who submitted mm -hmm. uh, any given question I'm going to read. Yeah. And, and for the people who have not, uh, 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 the names of the people that I'm not going to be mentioning because we have clubbed a few of the same questions under the same, uh, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in the same bucket. So I'm going to start off with one. When launching a new feature or product, how do you profile customer needs? Yeah, I think um, different answers for different product and features, right? Sometimes you want to do A-B experimentation. Sometimes you pick up some insight from consumer interaction, focus groups. You know, at times you will want to take just mock-ups to consumers, get their reaction. Uh, it's an iterative process, so I don't think there's you know one formula. But uh, the constant interaction with consumers, continuous feedback, measurement, iteration, it's probably the way companies are building products. You know, It used to be that product manager will have all the answers. Mm -hmm. Now it looks you know, data and consumers know much more. Um, today's technology allow you to do that. So most of what we do in product is just, you know, fail fast, iterate, measure. So is there any trick to finding the pulse of the uh, of the consumer needs when you're building your product? Is there, is, yeah. Are there any tricks that you found uh, while think, building uh, Mintra over the years? I think there are only two tricks, I think. One is just a lot of FaceTime interaction with consumers. Sometimes you have even small anecdotes. You pick up some unique insights. And other is just very, very rigorous measurement. You know, data eventually doesn't lie, right? You know, you have yeah. Great, great. I'll move on to the next question. Uh, what, according to you, is the future of fashion e-commerce? Yeah, I think it's a very exciting future. You know, even, so it's still, you know, there's a gap between your shopping experience when you go to a mall and go to a trial room. You can, um, and, and let's say if you happen to go to a trial room with a stylist, then you have totally different experience. I think eventually online will be able to deliver all of that for you. You can visualize the product on you. You can see, get good style tips, how to match things up, how to have almost a virtual wardrobe with you. So you're shopping not in isolation, but in context. You can, I can buy this, but I can pair that with uh, that thing in my wardrobe. See how does it look, you know, um, get interactive advice from stylists, you know, which may eventually be automated AI based. So I think, you know, fashion is one industry which is yet to be disruptive in a very big way by technology because it's very complicated. There's a lot of aesthetics, taste, mm -hmm. but I feel that technology is getting there where in the next five, seven years, we'll see massive disruption in how people shop for fashion. I, rem I remember the early days of Mintra when uh, the biggest question that I'm sure you used to face and mm -hmm. we used to face as investors mm -hmm. as well, can, can um, uh, uh, fashion lifestyle, yeah. which is a very touch and feel right. industry, yeah. can, you, can technology ever bridge right. uh, that, that lack of touch and feel? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and uh, we have come, ca come right. uh, uh, ca ca quite far from yeah. those days. But, but you still uh, feel there's a long way and technology can bridge the gap yeah. and, and uh, we can eliminate the look and feel need for consumers. Yeah. We have surely come a long way. I mean, if you think of, I think at Flipkart, almost half of our transactions involve fashion lifestyle. Mm. So from the days of, you know, whether people will buy, I mean, it seems like the only thing they're buying now online is fashion. Mm. So it definitely covered a lot of distance, but the buying experience is still not comparable to, you know, your experience shopping offline. And I think technology can really help bridge the gap there. Okay, very good. I'm going to uh, uh, move to the third one, uh, which is what was the genesis of Mintra? Yeah. Well, we have a you know, couple of iterations of Mintra. Initially, in the early days, we started as a personalization website. And the uh, inspiration was in late, mid-2000s, lot of, you know, it was starting to become possible to make products one at a time. So the inspiration was that eventually the world will move to a place where you can get pretty much anything custom made. I think eventually it looks like turned out to idea way ahead of its time. I think 3D printers and stuff are only now starting to take off. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the second inspiration was in 2010, I was visiting a lot of malls in India and spent during afternoon. And one thing stuck with, you know, basically the only stores in the malls are all the shop full of clothes and brands, but there's no one there in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And I felt that, you know, um, if all of this stuff was available online, people can shop for this, you know, from their office and where they are. And that was kind of inspiration for our second iteration, which ended up being, you know, very successful eventually. 
Very well. The, uh, that was asked by Chirag Shah. The, the next question, if not Mintra, what other space would you pick for your entrepreneurial journey? I think there are so many, especially in Indian context. I think you know education is one space that can be you know, massively you know, can create high impact. Um, I think now I feel um, AI will have huge disruption pretty much every field that you can pick. So that's an area of interest. I think you know we're looking at it very closely at Flipkart, obviously, but um, you know outside Flipkart, there are, you know numerous um, industries. You know, take healthcare can be very very different. Applying AI, anything expert based can uh, act will get automated and much better over a period of time. So it's likely you know, one of those things. There is a belief that in India, uh, products are easier to sell than services. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, as Indians, we like to touch and feel something and pay for it. Yeah. But, but, but uh, uh, health and uh, education, which are mm -hmm. more service oriented, are difficult to sell yeah. in India. And, yeah. and uh, uh, those companies are right. facing some trouble. But right. you feel that will change? Yeah. I think it's a part of overall economic development of the country. I feel at the top end of even education, like people you know go out of their way. I think India, you know, it's a cultural thing. You know, regardless of how much income people make, they save money and for their kids' education, go out of their way, right? So, great example of people, you know, definitely willing to pay for a the service. They believe the service is right for them. So, I think as um, people have more access, more information, better income, and right service which are designed from grounds up for Indians. You know, we saw the launch of Netflix recently. Mm -hmm. Some other you know streaming services are coming up. It's probably a matter of time. I think you know the, the people have to figure out right value proposition, right service, and maybe you know some kind of you know, freemium models where you start using basic service of free and eventually start paying for uh, differentiated services. Very well. And uh, I'm going to move on to the next question asked by Krishna Prasad. Uh, what do you tell people who say that there is no e-commerce business without discounts? Well, e-commerce is supposed to create discounts for consumers. So if you look at the basic thesis of e-commerce is the traditional retail has a lot of friction. You have all these stores, you know, which are open, you know, all throughout the day. You have staff there. You replicate inventory in each store. Just a lot of wastage. E-commerce uh, eliminates middlemen, bring economies of scale, and that's what you pass on to consumers as discounts. So I think you know discounts will always be part of online. That's but that does not mean the online business models can't be profitable. You know, around the world, there are now plenty of very large e-commerce business which are highly profitable and that's in a matter of time we start to see that in India. We have, I mean, Mintra last year we become a contribution margin positive, you know, when the first company e-commerce place to get there. Mm -hmm. And I think the journey has started in just a matter of a uh, you know, few years before we'll see some, you know, highly profitable businesses. So you, so you believe you can balance uh, 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 decent margins and, and at the same time uh, giving uh, enough incentives yeah. in terms of discounts yeah. and, and both can coexist. Absolutely. You need the right business model and profitability for long term you know, sustenance and longevity. Um, but if you are you build a large scale business with a lot of economic scale and efficiency and all the waste that you eliminate, you can continue to pass that to consumers as discounts. Very good. The next one, uh, how did you know it was the right time to pivot Mintra from personalization platform to fashion e-commerce? I think uh, we always had the aspiration of building something uh, which will scale which will have very high impact at the country level. The personation ended up being a very niche business. Uh, with, um, you know, it would have been a good 50 crore business, but it would have never scaled to thousands of crores. Mm -hmm. So with that clarity, and you know, once we could see all the signs that business not going to scale beyond certain level, it was more of a, you know, what should we pivot into? It was not a question of whether we should pivot or not. Mm. And, and you felt uh, you had enough learnings and, and, and skills and the employee resources mm -hmm. to, to pivot from the personalization to fashion was not a major overhaul of what you needed to do. It took some effort, you know, the whole pivoting process, you know, took about a year, mm -hmm. but it again boils down to, you know, the conviction and uh, our, um, we arrived at uh, fashion as an eventual um, business model with a lot of background work, looking at size of the market, margin profile, state of affairs in India, the opportunity, it was almost no brainer. So what with the whole homework in place, was not that difficult to convince people and because we've done personalization for previous four years we had the basic systems process consumer understanding in place to be able to move very fast very good uh, okay shall I move on to the next one uh, asked by Gaurav Kumar Sumani what are your thoughts on inventory model versus marketplace model yeah, both models have their you know, it, uh, its own place I think if you know in a categories which are concentrated by brands uh, where experience matters selection uh, 
quality of selection matters. Inventory model tend to be better business model. In all the long tail, where you have massive selection, no standardization, lot of sellers, marketplace is more efficient. You know, in the first one, you are able to take risk uh, uh, because it's, you're dealing with a known quantity, and you are able to have right relationship with the brands, right margin profile. You can negotiate uh, 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 risk arbitrage. In the uh, similarly, in the uh, non-standard you know products, there there is not you know inventory for you to buy, and a lot of sellers can compete with each other, and over a period of time, in you know, a good sell quality selection will surface up. There will also be a healthy degree of churn. So I genuinely don't think there is a fundamentally, you know, absolute right or wrong business model. You need to understand the category dynamics of what you're trying to sell, how is the supply structured, and accordingly pick the right business model. And, and, and in a large uh, uh, company or an e-commerce play like Mintra, you had a mixed uh, mm -hmm. model of both inventory yeah. and marketplace. Yeah. And right. So Mintra is majority uh, inventory model because we primarily deal with brands. Mm -hmm. Flipkart is more hybrid because some of our categories like mobile phones, television, some of the fashion are you know head brand oriented, mm -hmm. but then categories like the fashion also has you know huge long tail, mm -hmm. home and furniture and you know, unorganized some of the new categories. So again we are you know picking the business model based on the category dynamics. Very good. Uh, uh, the next question asked by Achal Kutari, what led to the decision for Flipkart Mintra merger? Yeah I think um, the realization that you know, together we can be a significant, you know, formidable player in the Indian space. You know, fashion is a very strategic category. This merger enabled uh, Flipkart, you know, Mintra combination to have massive lead over other, you know, players. Uh, uh, we had a lot of complementary strength. You know, had a good chemistry also with the Flipkart co-founder Sachin and Bini. So all put together, we felt that you know, just strengthen both organization. In retrospect, I feel it has also gone that way. Mintra has grown considerably in the last two years. You know, Basically, it's a, Mintra has won the vertical fashion space, and uh, acquisition also enabled Flipkart fashion to take off. Uh, you know, uh, Mintra was able to take benefit from all the scale that Flipkart had, from supply chain to access to consumers to low cost of marketing. It's been a pretty synergistic uh, merger. Very good. And uh, uh, this is going to be the last question. I'm clubbing uh, three of them together. Okay. Uh, asked by Pratik Lal, uh, Vinay. Uh, Parmeshwar Appa and uh, Manohar Johar. Which was the lowest point in your entrepreneurial journey and what made you not give up then? Yeah. I think there was a six month period um, in 2013. You know, things really slowed down. You know, if you guys remember the uh, rupee went to 70 and uh, India was suddenly not a place where anyone wanted to invest it. Mm -hmm. You know, that cycle coincided with, you know, Mintra pretty much running out of cash. Mm -hmm. So it was pretty tiring, you know, six months. We knocked every last door out there, mm -hmm. somehow managed to scrape through. But uh, what uh, allowed us to continue was very, very deep conviction that we were fundamentally building a good company, mm -hmm. strong foundation, strong culture, mm -hmm. differentiated value proposition, mm -hmm. and um, also patience, you know, to wait out for the long term. We also had, you know, decent support from uh, our investors. You know, they helped us kind of go through a difficult time. So it was never a question of, you know, whether we should give up or continue. I think that's, uh, I think, entrepreneurial journey requires that long-term conviction. Yeah, yeah. And many people don't realize that you raised uh, the round, the tough right. round you're talking about, right. and then sold right. not not because of lack of cash that you that's sold right. a flip exactly. card. Absolutely. You were able to raise exactly. that round. Yeah, I think yeah, going back to what I was saying earlier. You know, that when we are convinced that you know, together that the both companies will be much more stronger. Yeah, yeah.